It is my pleasure of introducing Stephanie Oglemeyer, who's currently in her third, the third year of her PhD in Comparative Literature at the University of Kent, working on contemporary French and German autofictional novels and their derivations. Her thesis is entitled Hijacking a Genre on the Uses of the 21st Century French and German Autofictional Novel as a means of responding to contemporary literary anxieties. And she um, focuses on authors such as Michel Houellebecq, Amélie Nothomb, Felicitas Hopp, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, and Clemens Zetz. And uh, she'll be presenting a paper, exciting paper, with Josephine Baker, who's now friends with Justin Timberlake. I don't know if Facebook is going to crop up, but we'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for that uh, very kind introduction, Claire, and thank you so much, Erica, for having me here. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be here, and uh, even in, at the start of the, uh, the conference today, um, you know, I was sort of starting to make connections with everything else that everybody had been saying, and I thought, oh, I should mention this in my paper, I should mention that in my paper, and obviously I won't have time to address all of these uh, issues, uh, but, uh, but I'd really, really like to. Um, Good. Well, with uh, further ado, I'll jump, jump right in then. So, in his novel Lookalikes, published in 2011, Thomas Meinecke combines pop literatur with autofictional elements in an attempt to develop a multimedial and multilingual model for contemporary storytelling about the present through genre mixing and sampling. By featuring a cast of lookalike characters who resemble celebrities and whose main interaction involves discussions of popular culture, the text explores themes of identity construction in the age of Google. While the text has yet only been published in hard copy, as you can see here, uh, the debt it owes to digital material and online interaction is clear, especially in the lookalike characters' dialogues. Communication in the novel is most often mediated via Facebook and its various interactive tools. While this is done partly to bridge physical distances, it also facilitates transitions and links between the disparate sections of a text woven together out of quotations, intermedial references, and snippets of critical discourses. Moreover, the inclusion of other languages besides German adds a multilingual dimension to the text that on the one hand further complicates the attribution of content to individuals or extra textual sources, and on the other allows for misreadings and misunderstandings in a way that the text actively acknowledges. Lookalikes therefore not only borrows from digital content and online models of communication, but also anticipates its reception by a digitally literate readership and the further proliferation of its components on the internet. My paper will argue that lookalikes challenges contemporary conceptions of the novel, as well as commenting on contemporary methods of processing and exchanging knowledge and content. To give you a brief introduction to the author, since I can't imagine many of you are familiar with him, having established himself as a writer, musician, and DJ in Germany in the late 80s, Meinecke is now well known as one of the three Zurkamp pop literature or pop literature authors, Reinhard Goetz and Andreas Neumeister being the other two. These authors share a fascination with popular culture and music, as well as a similar concern with writing literature that somehow does justice to the present. As one critic observes, their aim is not so much to understand or explain the present, but to approach it by means of citing, recording, copying, and taking stock. Rather than claiming to capture or represent contemporary reality, pop literature attempts to, and I quote, set free diagnostic potential with regards to the present without smothering this potential through explanations, expressions of opinions, or other aids to comprehension. In Meinecke's case, this means writing novels in a sober and inoffensive style and focusing less on plot than on a cast of generally hip and attractive young characters who themselves function as vehicles for elements of philosophical, literary, and cultural critical discourses. The literary technique Meinecke uses has been described as sampling, likening Meinecke's role as an author, actually enough, to that of a DJ or arrangeur who generates rather than writes a text through sampling, mixing, and remixing. His texts are a heterogeneous construct of quotations, intertextual and intermedial references, and his dialogue tends to be interrogative and repetitive rather than affirmative or expository. As critics have pointed out, this is Meinecke's way of adopting theory, not only as a topic of his novels, but also as a method or literary process. In one of Meinecke's earlier, earlier novels, Tomboy, 
For example, the interrogative style of the novel matches the interrogative style of much of Judith Butler's writing. The novel thus addresses core concepts of gender theory in both content and style, while at the same time opening these concepts up, concepts up to new readings in the context which the literary text provides. Uh, Meinecke has stated repeatedly that he sees no value in adhering to conventional literary ideals such as originality and invention. This method of writing by sampling and the creation of an associative web around topics of interest nevertheless makes it possible for him to express his own concerns and preoccupations as a novelist through someone else's voice. In one example from Lookalikes, uh, Meineke quotes a passage from Henry Louis Gates Jr.'s The Signifying Monkey in order to at least partially explain how <coughs> his own technique of sampling, so, sorry, to partially explain his own technique of sampling and thereby explain more broadly how the novel itself works. And I quote, this is originally in English in the novel as well, so I haven't translated this, but all the other translations from German into English I've done myself because this hasn't been translated into English as yet. So, Mumbo Jumbo by Ishmael Reed is the great black intertext replete with intratexts referring to one another within the text of Mumbo Jumbo and also referring outside themselves to all those other named texts, as well as those texts unnamed but invoked through concealed reference, repetition, and reversal. The passage does not perhaps describe how a lookalikes works exactly, but the parallels are clear to see, as lookalikes like Mumbo Jumbo uh, creates links within itself, but also refers to texts and other media that exist outside the text, but that are echoed directly or indirectly in the novel. Uh, so this passage gives the reader insight into how to read the novel, while at the same time adding a further node surrounding Ishmael Reed and Mumbo Jumbo to the associative web that is being created both on the page and in the reader's mind. Uh, so I'm going to make a slight digression here just because I want to refer back to this at a later point. Um, in the case of lookalikes specifically, this associative web is spun across two narrative st strands. One features a series of young and attractive lookalike characters who resemble the popular culture slash cultural studies icons Josephine Baker, Justin Timberlake, Serge Gainsbourg, uh, Greta Garbo, Shakira and Britney Spears living mainly in Dusseldorf, ostensibly Germany's fashion capital, and spanning a variety of gender identities and sexual orientations. Their, primar their primary interaction involves discussing topics including fashion, pop music, religion, and of course, gender and identity construction. Uncharacteristically for Meineke, the second narrative strand features the li author's literary alter ego, also called Thomas Meineke, I'll refer to him as Thomas in this paper, who travels to Salvador da Bahia, Brazil, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, in order to retrace the steps of German author and ethnographer Hubert Fichte and his encounters with the local syncretic Candomblé religion. Meineke has been quick to point out that the novel is no way meant to function as either a personal account of real life experiences or an exercise in uh, self-discovery or self-invention since its primary interests very clearly lie elsewhere. But what's interesting about the inclusion of Thomas is that uh, the character also functions as a sort of lookalike or double of Hubert Fichte's own literary alter ego, Jackie. Uh, so just a very quick sort of visual representation of that. Uh, you've got Meineke as Thomas and lookalikes, and he sort of draws on uh, Fichte's works um, to create his own literary alter ego. Uh, so, though Thomas might not give us great insight into who My Meineke is as a person, uh, he can nonetheless offer the reader clues about Meineke's own relationship with his text and his conception of the author-reader relationship. Even though Thomas might seem quite an incongruous element in this text, I'm bringing him up to demonstrate how Thomas functions here as yet another voice contending for the reader's attention and one that conventionally commands the reader's trust. End of digression. Uh, Meineke's strong interest in digital forms of literature is not only clear from interviews, but also from the construction of his novels themselves. A previous novel, Heblau, has been read by one critic as a blog or online chat room dominated by three main characters. And several critics have observed how Meineke strives to create a sense of interconnectedness in his texts with quasi-imitations of hyperlinks. Moreover, particularly in lookalikes, uh, frequent mention is made of social media platforms and online communication tools. Alongside email, Twitter, Skype, YouTube, and even MySpace, uh, he most commonly refers to interactions on Facebook, such as Josephine Baker is now friends with Justin Timberlake, Erdmutter Wagenbach poked Serge Gainsbourg, 
Justin Timberlake and Serge Gainsbourg joined the group Rainbow Culture of Diversity. Greta commented on Justin's post, Serge and five others like this. Britney Spears shared a link on Greta Garbo's wall. Besides demonstrating Meineke's delight in mixing lowbrow and highbrow culture, these interactions fulfill a double function, referring on the one hand to the writing process of the novel itself, while on the other anticipating its immediate reception among readers. Meineke shows us through Thomas's actions, parts of the novel's creation process, including email correspondence with a friend regarding a photograph he is searching for, I need it urgently for my new novel and can't find it through Google, conducting some superficial online research in the form of accessing Wikipedia articles, back at the hotel, researched Arnold Berkeley's Isle of the Dead, and sharing some of the findings of his research on Facebook. Thomas Meineke posts two YouTube videos on his Facebook wall. This corresponds closely to Meineke's own professed conception of authorship, according to which he sees himself as a reader rather than an author. In Meineke's own words, and I quote, I have learned to write my text not as an author, but as a reader, so to speak, to reproduce in written form the process of my reading, to let material that I have found and that I don't necessarily have to have understood properly, over which I am not lord and master, flow through me, and to pass this on to other readers. This conception of authorship allows for a reception process that is remarkably similar to the writing process, enabling the reader to follow Thomas's and the other characters' paths of inquiry quite directly via the internet. That the text explicitly encourages this kind of approach is, moreover, made clear through incidents in which characters seek to confirm suspicions, to expand their knowledge, or in which they are merely following a whim. For example, mention of the fact that one of Serge's Google searches containing the keywords no joke, uh, flesh-coloured panties with hair on the front 1950s yields no results is likely to rouse the reader's curiosity and incite her to determine this for herself. In another instance we read, search the erotic drawings that the architect Le Corbusier made of Josephine Baker's body in 1929 on board the ocean liner Lutetia. Since the look-alike Josephine is the viewpoint character most likely associated with this section of the text, the quotation could be read as a note Josephine makes to herself, but it could also be interpreted as an injunction to the reader to stop and Google the drawings. The address to the reader becomes even more explicit in an online exchange between Justin and Serge regarding Lynn Carter, a female impersonator, who is said to have worn some of Josephine Baker's stage costumes. As Justin tells Serge, two, three clicks of the mouse, and you'll find pictures in which he's wearing them. Should the reader decide to follow this, these particular instructions given explicitly in the second person singular, you or do in the original, she will be pleased to discover that Googling Lynn Carter Josephine Baker costumes does indeed yield results. So these are the <laughs> results of my own Googling, <laughs> which I had to do a lot when reading this novel. This experience of quasi-simultaneity of doing something at the same time as, it, as it's happening in the novel can become slightly unsettling, or unheimlich, as one critic notes. Also unsettling is the way the novel opens up space for confusion and misunderstandings due to the associative, disjointed, and uninstructive manner in which it is written. A good example of this is Justin's distraction as he researches Latoya Jackson online. Many people also claim that Latoya doesn't actually exist. Latoya is said to be merely an alter ego of her brother, Michael Jackson. She is said to be Michael Jackson. One would have to check whether and how she's continued to appear after his death, Justin Timberlake muses and clicks himself deeper into the World Wide Web. For the center of the Playboy magazine, Latoya, if indeed it is her, is made up very much in the manner of Michael Jackson. Geez, those two really do look incredibly similar, is Justin's verdict. Maybe Michael Jackson isn't dead after all? Like how Elvis and all the others are still alive and nobody ever dies in hip-hop anymore. That's the German, just uh, for reference as well. This kind of digressing or getting lost is not merely facilitated by the text. In fact, in fact the text itself thematizes a way of processing knowledge in which not understanding, misunderstanding, or not quite getting it right are all integral parts. Knowledge gained by the characters is usually qualified by phrases such as allegedly, possibly, not quite certain, or something I've read somewhere. In relation to a text by Jacques Lacan that she is reading for a reading group, Shakira complains, every time it seems to me that I understand less of the text. Uh, also striking is how slight inaccuracies or aberrations appear frequently throughout the text. Shakira's husband notices how the German subtitles of a Jean-Luc Godard film he is watching clearly deviate from the original script. 
and he confuses the names of historic novelist and playwright Cyrano de Bergerac and contemporary fashion designer Jean-Charles Castelbajac. Thomas is handed a business card by a Brazilian taxi driver in Salvador da Bahia that reads John Lennon Taxi, spelt like so. And Josephine, while shopping in Salvador da Bahia, notices people wearing t-shirts that sport slogans in English, almost all of which are incorrect in terms of both spelling and grammar. With regard to one in particular that reads, life is that you make it, Josephine wonders, was that really what they meant? So as a kind of side note here, these are some of my ideas about the text that haven't quite uh, come to fruition yet, um, but that I'll, I'll, will be much more inter interesting to pursue in light of sort of all the, the discussions of sort of multilingualism that we've had here. Um, so it's worth highlighting that all the examples of inaccuracies I've mentioned here involve a switch from one language to another. This doesn't necessarily mean that Meineke is making a point about multiling multilingualism here, but it does indicate that the default context for any given statement in his novels is most likely a multilingual one. I think he sort of takes this for granted. Uh, it would certainly be worth pursuing uh, possible comparisons between the associative models of gaining knowledge, as exemplified in lookalikes, and the process of learning a foreign language, perhaps. Uh, evidently, such an associative learning Language learning process could have potentially disastrous consequences. One need only think of false friends as an example, though Meineke would nonetheless probably condone this as a productive kind of misunderstanding. And of course, in practice, all language learning is to some extent associative and contingent. Um, but let's have a look at another example of inaccuracies in lookalikes. What makes this aspect of the text even more interesting is an instance in which Meineke quotes from Michelle Wallace's book, Invisibility Blues from Pop to Theory. In a passage concerning Ishmael Reed, whom I mentioned at the start of the presentation, if you recall, Wallace's text reads, and I quote, Reed's determination to see feminism as a historical error reduces his black feminist characters to hand puppets mouthing his inane views. In Meineke's quotation, however, we find that inane is not reprinted as inane, but has suddenly turned into insane. Considering that, as we have seen, inaccuracies are a theme that runs throughout the novel, one's initial suspicion that this might just be a typo, an arbitrary correction through some form of software, or an oversight by Meineke's editor might already be weakened somewhat. One could even argue, given Meineke's openness to slippages and misinterpretation, that it does not matter much whether this error was deliberate or not. However, justification for examining this passage as significant is given to us toward the end of the novel during a conversation between Thomas and Wiebke Kannengiese, a researcher who has written a thesis on Hubert Fichte, whose writing, as I mentioned earlier, serves as a sort of basis for Thomas's character as well. Wiebke describes how, in reading one of Fichte's quasi-autobiographical novels in which he otherwise consistently uses the name Jackie to refer to his literary alter ego, she suddenly comes across a page on which the character is referred to as Hubert. As Wiebke tells Thomas, I asked myself then whether this was something the, edit the editors missed. If in 100 uh, sorry, 850 pages, Jackie is once addressed as Hubert, that completely threw me. That's a deliberate choice after all. From my perspective as a literary scholar, I've got this one text and I'll interpret this one for now. And if it says Hubert at one point, then in the first instance, that isn't the editor's mistake in my view. Even if it is a mistake, I won't just let it pass. Thomas's response to this is, it's part of the text. So the author figure in the novel is in agreement with the literary scholar slash reader figure. The fact that Meineke feels the need to additionally legitimize Wiebke's reading, and by extension the application of this manner of reading to lookalikes itself, through the character of Thomas, could be read as an unwelcome and superfluous intrusion by the author figure, in a way that was quite uncharacteristic of Meineke's writing. Evidently, there's a conflict of interest being staged here. Since generally, however, Thomas is framed as someone who undergoes the same arduous, non-linear learning processes as his fellow characters, we can also read this as an instance in which Meineke is demonstrating his own fallibility and desire to learn from others. So to conclude, I hope to have demonstrated here that in lookalikes, Meineke instrumentalizes the text's agglomerative of nature in terms of sampling of its sampling of both analog and digital material, as well as multilingualism, in order to draw attention to the similarities between the writing and the reading processes that are appropriate to this text. Meineke seeks to highlight how the clustering of the text's elements is a contingent and associative process, mirroring the processes of navigating content on the internet, 
in which the author acts as a compiler rather than a writer. He also encourages a reception of the text that allows for its reintegration, if only in part, into the World Wide Web. Well, one critic's suggestion that lookalikes be turned into an iPhone app in which the reader could remix their own version of the novel is unlikely to come to fruition. It is nonetheless clearly the author's intention that this content be further disseminated online or via other media and that the text thereby extend beyond the boundary of its covers. Thank you very much. <laughs>